at last we come to part eight, the final part. And that's what your final cash budget should look like. That's the last budget you need to actually do. I just want to go through this and point out some things to you. First of all, beginning cash balance, we're told that this company must have a beginning balance of 47000 It says every month we have to have $40,000 in cash going forward. If we have more than that, we're fine. If we have less than that, we need to borrow. Cash receipts from customers. We had to compute our cash and they tell us that our cash is received 30%. So we have to add down the total sales because we're going to collect 30% in this month and 100% of it will collect by the end of the next month. So in April we're collecting all, uh, we're collecting 30% of April and 70% or 100% of our accounts receivable from March. That's how we come up with that number. So that number is 30% of April and 70% of March, which is the balance in the accounts receivable budget. Just as this is 30% of May and 70% of April and June is 30% of June and 70% of May. That's how we collect it. 30% in the month of the sale 70% in the month after. It's just the way this company does business. So there's our total cash available. Now, that's from our raw materials budget. That's from our labor budget. That's for our payments for variable overhead. That's our sales commissions. Remember, the sales, the variable overhead didn't have a depreciation component. If it did, we would subtract it. There's our sales salary. There's our general and administrative salaries. There's our loan interest. We're given that 1% of the $12,000. $12, and there's our long-term interest. We're given that. So our total cash payments for April 433000 That's how much we're going to have to pay. Our beginning cash balance, again, we're given that. It's 95346 We have to repay the loan to the bank. Again, this was all in the additional information that we're given. So our ending cash balance before we pay the loan is 83446. Our minimum required cash is 40,000. We have that. There's our beginning cash balance. Now we're going to go through the same exact thing. Cash collected from customers, that's 30% of May sales. and 70% of April. That's how we come up with that. And again, these are the numbers we computed. Our raw material budget, our labor budget, variable overhead budget, our sales commission budget, our sales constant salary budget, our general and administrative budget, Dividends, they're told, they're given to us in the supplemental information. We have to account. We have to make sure we have the cash to pay for those. We have to pay our long-term loan interest. So our total cash payments are 124295 
We have no special things like paying a loan or anything, so we're good. And again, 124.95 is well in excess of 40,000. So we'll just carry that up to the top. And begin all over again. Cash receipts from customers, 30% of June, 70% of May. And payments from our raw material budget, our labor budget, our overhead budget, our sales commissions, our sales salaries, our general and admin. We have no dividends this month. Our loan interest and our purchase of equipment given to us as additional information. So our total cash payments are 569700 we have 592. That leaves us a balance of 23,248. Remember, our rule is that we always end the month with no less than 40,000. So we have to do some additional borrowings to give us the 16,752. And that's a completed cash budget. My goal, my hope was that this would help you see how all of the pieces of an entity fit together, starting with the sales budget, all of the things that are offspring of the sales budget, and how they all come together again at the end in the cash budget.